And look, this is a question I really want to ask you because it's a question that I get asked all the time. And that's um, how can tech companies command such high valuations relative to sometimes often the very small amount of revenue that they're generating? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think the there's a few things. Yeah, you know, for one, um, software firms they tend to have customers that stay around for a really long time that have very high net present value. Um, at a typical B two C firm that we'll do work on, uh, it's not uncommon for them to have like twenty percent revenue retention. You know, whatever revenue you got from those customers, go forward a year, you're earning like twenty cents on the dollar. Uh, yeah, customers churn, um, and, and, and that's just that's just part of life. It doesn't necessarily mean that the firm is bad. Contrast that to a SaaS firm. The very best SaaS firms will often have revenue retention that's 120, 130, 140, 150 percent, which means whatever business they did with you on day one, when they first became a paying customer, they're doing like 40, 50 percent more than that in, in year number two. And then oftentimes it kind of keeps going up from there. And so, so when a company is generating a certain amount of revenue today, you know, even with just the customers that they have already acquired, the revenue will be potentially 30, 40, 50% higher in the following year. Then when you layer on all the customers that they may you know, acquire over the next year, uh, it's kind of even more, you know, even more growth above that. So, so the ability to see, um, kind of very dramatic and durable revenue growth is um, is possible for software, you know, basically for SaaS type firms in a way that's just not possible for uh, for B2C. I think now, now market conditions are interesting, so no doubt about that, but uh, but there is some amount of um, you know, the, the revenue multiple that I think is merited. Um, you know, so just kind of this revenue dynamic. Uh, I think the second piece is um, the margin profile. You know, said so software firms typically, you know, the good ones, they're doing 89 and 80, 90 percent gross margin. Um, you know, contrast that to B2C again. Oftentimes, it can be anywhere as low as, you know, like in the teens, um, you know, obviously as high as like 50 percent, but uh, 50 percent would be you know, pretty good for for your typical, um, you know, direct to consumer firm. So, yeah, so you can kind of bring on that marginal customer and um, and that marginal customer could be basically pure profit so so yet yeah, again it just it kind of allows for um for scaled growth in a way that you wouldn't expect um i say the third factor uh, is probably the the working capital profile you know so oftentimes software firms they'll they'll get paid up front for the next six months of business you know something like that and so um so they're bringing in a lot of money up front and then they're having to spend money later on and so when you look at them from a like a gap you know profit standpoint it may not look quite as good but actually the cash flow profile could be amazing and um it's typical direct to consumer it's more like what you'd normally expect you know that they have to have some amount of buffer working capital and since they grow um that they may need to, to raise a lot more capital than, than a software firm would <clears throat> so there's just all sorts of factors like that that i think allow um, software firms to just pound for pound be more valuable for the same amount of revenue uh, holding on to SQL.